seen the power of the Anthem. Destroy entire civilizations. You have no idea what the Heart of Rage can do to that person. I feel a new power in the world. It's calling me. The generations, our people struggle just to survive. Let's go. The javelins allowed us to fight back the chaos. And the walls protected our families. Loved ones. Remember, we're a team. I'm right there with you. It's a freelancer job. Always has been. But the anthem still rages. And walls can only do so much. But with the power of the anthem at my fingertips, I will end. All this needless suffering. Run! How's it going, guys? Chaos Prime here. So Anthem is drawing nearer and nearer, and with it being a direct competition to Bungie's Destiny 2, I decided it's time to start looking at this beast. Along with this, a month later, The Division 2 comes out, so Bungie will have a lot on its hands if it really is going to want to compete. And I'll be honest, Gambit won't hold a candle much, especially when you look now and 10% of all games I enter, including the new Forge content which only just recently came out, people are AFKing from the start, waiting for others to do the work. So hopefully, both Anthem and The Division 2 will be the stern wake-up call for Bungie. However, this isn't a Destiny video, it is a Anthem video. My first, actually. So I'm pretty excited, and if we get enough views and likes, I'll look into actually making more of these in the future. First of all, when can you play Anthem? On screen now, you will see the dates, so let's go through them. From January the 25th to January the 27th, you have the VIP demo period. In order to gain access to this, you need to either pre-order the base game or the Legion of Dawn edition. However, with that being said, if you have Origin Basic or Premier subscription for PC, or EA Access for the Xbox, you can also jump in on this between January the 25th and January the 27th. Sadly, Sony gets none of this and will be missing out. So if you're on the PlayStation 4, sadly, you're not gonna be playing at this time. On February the 1st to the 3rd, it is an open demo. And make note, they are calling it a demo, so this is pretty much what you're gonna be getting when you buy the game. This isn't some beta that they're trying to pass off. This is pretty much as close to the final product as you're gonna get. This, however, from February the 1st to the 3rd, is open to all. Make note, this is really, really important, so do play this game moderately. All progress up to this point, up to the 3rd of February, will be wiped. All your progress will be deleted. A fresh account will be made for you, ready for when the game is out. But all progress from January the 25th to February the 3rd will be wiped. February the 15th, PC gets early access with indefinite time to play before the game's official release on February the 22nd. Xbox owners with EA Access gets an additional 10 hours to play. It's weird how Xbox gets 10 hours and PC gets infinite time to play for the early access. It's odd, but I'm guessing it's how EA Access on the Xbox is actually designed. So with that said, again, Sony do miss out on early access. On February the 22nd, the game releases and all early access progress from the 15th of February is kept. So just to reiterate, January the 25th to February the 3rd, all data will be wiped. February the 15th to February the 22nd to the game's release, all data progress will be kept. Anthem is a PvE only game with no PvP built in. It's a refreshing change to see something like this and honestly very scary. It means they need to make sure they have content coming out frequently to keep the masses entertained. However, the devs, the ones behind the original Mass Effect trilogy, for those that have played the amazing games that they are, stated on stream that the length of the main narrative content and things to do in Anthem 
pre-Elder game, what they are calling the endgame events, pretty much endgame content, will be equivalent to any one of their Bioware single player games such as Dragon Age Origins, Mass Effect Trilogy or even Knights of the Old Republic. So expect a pretty lengthy single player campaign here. That narrative content in question was penned and completed by Drew Karpshin before he left to work on solo projects until they have need for him in the future. Expansions maybe? More DLC maybe? Who knows? Drew is responsible for the story content of several of those games mentioned above, so rest assured your content length and more importantly content quality and narrative quality are in masterful hands. After all, the Mass Effect trilogy is one of the greatest games of all time. We know that the controllable mechs are called javelins and they are customizable with the only microtransactions being cosmetic. So let's get the microtransaction out the door now, only cosmetic items will be available for microtransactions. And before you start getting worried, the last I read EA were going to do a straight purchase policy so if you want something you can just buy it. Unlike competitors who swim in the loot box realm of things, EA have opted for the more Fortnite approach where if you see something you like, you buy it and it's yours. No gambling, no risk, if it's £5, you pay £5, you get the item. Pure and simple, and to me this is the best way going forward. The loot box system is just pure horrendous. So credit given where credit due, well done EA. What is certain is that there will be dungeons. Good stuff. They will be aptly named strongholds, and it's what you're watching on screen now. They have not outright denied raids, but have said we call them something different. Much like how the rest of the gaming universe calls Endgame, well Endgame here in Anthem is called Elder Game. Go figure. We will have mini public events like in Destiny, but also world event bosses like you have in say Final Fantasy XIV where you will need the aid of many to take down said titans. There will be a Shaper Storm event which is being tooted as rift like events to those familiar with those from Diablo, but the most interesting thing here is the fact that you will have 6 difficulty settings to do everything. Easy, Medium, Hard, Grandmaster 1, 2 and 3. Endgame gear, or Elder Game gear as EA is calling it, is going to be based on RNG getting those specific pieces to drop. You have a higher chance of getting higher rarity stuff based on level and difficulty, so playing on Grandmaster 3 and being level 30 is best chance for legendary gear, but Grandmaster 3 is going to require pretty good gear, so do take that in mind and don't just jump into Grandmaster 3 because you're going to get wrecked. This method of level gating though may be weird, is very common in many MMOs out there, especially in the free to play field. The Division also from patch 1.4 did a similar thing with their world tiers ranging from tier 1 to 5, 5 being the hardest and offering the best rewards. So hopefully it's not just going to be a case of bullet sponge bosses and one hit kill mechanics to yourself, with each difficulty I'd like to see a new mechanic or something that makes it difficult not just artificial which many many developers do today. Something to note and a positive thing, it does seem however all gear can theoretically drop from anywhere. The final two tiers it said, masterworks and legendaries, will be unique items with unique bonuses and not randomly rolled if that's even a thing. It's all very vague at present, however think more Diablo 3 both in terms of how loot works and in terms of what type of items we'll get. Gameplay wise it reminded me a lot of Mass Effect which should be no surprise and a bit of Warframe, especially the ninja swinging javelin. It shows that each javelin will have dedicated roles, something that was very prominent in the division before they changed it and something that's never been a thing in Destiny 2 or destiny as a whole. Dedicated roles mean as a group you decide who does what and how things will go and plan accordingly. I have a very big expectation for this aspect of the gameplay and if the game itself allows you to tweak things to make further builds, to make certain things stronger for certain situations then this will be all the better. The story trailer looked okay, the gameplay looked interesting, I will say I am still on the fence for Anthem. I want to see more and I will be investing more time looking around to see what I missed so far. Checking out 
the dev streams, and so forth. It's an exciting time to be a Looter Shooter fan, with so many great options now coming and increasing the choice. And remember, competition is always good. It means companies can no longer be lazy. If they are, their franchise sinks and the others prosper. Well, I hope you enjoyed this entry video to Anthem. I must say I enjoyed making it and it's a refreshing change and if you did, drop a like and subscribe for more. It only takes a second of your time, but it really helps me and the channel get noticed. Being new, every little bit of help and support goes a long way for me to hopefully one day do this full time. Thanks again everyone and have a Merry Christmas. And remember, even if this is not a Destiny video, in the world of Anthem, you can still remain legend. In the beginning, we were slaves to the violent chaos of this world. But there was one among us who rose up to lead us out of darkness. The ones who followed became the Legion of Dawn and protected those who could not protect themselves. In the end, she traded her life for our future. It is in her honor that we fight. And it is her legacy that will carry the day.